The other day I was searching around local listings and found something very interesting. An old flagship of a laptop from 2007 for only 10 bucks. I couldn't pass this up so I went ahead and picked it up. Let's see what I managed to grab. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad T60P. As usual, we'll jump right into the specs. For the CPU, it's using the Core 2 Duo T7200, which is clocked at 2 GHz on 2 cores. The chip was quite a good performer in 2007 and is actually the third best CPU available for this laptop, which is nice to have right off the bat. On terms of RAM, we have 2 GB of DDR2 RAM clocked at 667 MHz. Definitely not a lot to have, but we'll be addressing that a little bit later. Now on to probably the best part of this laptop, the GPU. It's the ATI Mobility Fire GL V5250, which is quite a capable part. It's clocked at 450 MHz along with 256 MB of GDDR3 clocked at 350 MHz. I won't go into any of the detailed specifications, but to sum up, it's pretty much identical to the desktop Radeon X1600 XT on terms of specs, and should be similar performance-wise as well. Not bad for a laptop. Back in 2007, the ThinkPad T60P was the performance derivative of the standard T60, hence the dedicated GPU and generally beefed up specs. As such, the laptop was a good bit more expensive than a standard T60. I think this configuration would have run you just short of $3,000 US dollars back in the day. That would be $4,100 adjusted for inflation. It's kind of amazing to get this beast for only 10 bucks 15 years later. Let's take a quick look around the laptop and some of its features. First off is the screen. It's a 1680x1050 TN panel, and it looks really nice with such a high resolution. Heck, it rivals some of the modern laptops I've seen when it comes to visual fidelity. Unfortunately, it falls short when it comes to brightness. This display is quite dim, making it difficult to see in a well-lit room. I don't know if it was like this originally, or if this is due to age, but I digress. Now, as to be expected, the keyboard on this laptop is phenomenal. It has an amazing typing feel, and overall is the best keyboard I've used on a laptop to date. Speaking of the keyboard, in the middle of it is the iconic track point. I'll say, I thought it was going to be terrible to use, but after trying it out for a while, it's actually pretty nice. It's not like it became my preferred method of input or anything, but it's nice to have, especially when the touchpad is so small. The laptop's construction is very substantial. The rubberized lid along with its titanium roll cage makes this thing feel very sturdy. It's clear that this laptop was meant to take some abuse. The selection of ports is quite extensive on this laptop. It has three USB ports, express card and PCMCIA slots, Ethernet, VGA, and even a modem. You really don't see a lot of I.O. in new laptops, so this is refreshing to see, even on an older device. Another interesting feature on this laptop is its hot swappable drive bay, dubbed the Ultra Bay. I have a standard optical drive, but it can be swapped out with another hard drive or even a second battery. The last thing I want to show you is the Think Light. It's a small LED lamp and the screen bezel that shines on the keyboard so you can see it at night. I didn't find myself using it too much, but it's a fun little feature nonetheless. Okay, enough on this laptop's features. Let's get into the upgrades. First off, I upgraded the RAM. 2GB isn't going to cut it, so for $5, I picked up 4GB of DDR2 SODIMS. Installing them was simple. All I had to do was unscrew 4 screws on the bottom of the laptop and remove the palm rest. Under that is the RAM slots, which from there you just slot the new memory in. Unfortunately, due to a chipset limitation, only 3GB of this RAM is usable, but this shouldn't matter too much and is going to be way better than just 2 gigs. Next, I upgraded the storage. The hard drive in here was old and slow, so I replaced it with a 240GB SSD. The Samsung 860 EVO is a bit of an overkill choice for this laptop, but it's what I have on hand at the moment, so I decided to use it. Keep in mind, any SSD on this laptop will be running at only SATA 1 speeds, but will still be way faster than a hard drive. Finally, I decided to upgrade the battery, as the one in it was dead. I picked up a used 6 cell battery for 8 bucks, and I guess I got lucky because it still had 97% of its design capacity. This was the most simple upgrade as you just slot it in and that's it. All in all, I really like how modular and user serviceable this laptop is. Upgrades are easy to make as the parts are commonly available and they require no special tools to install. Anyway, now we have to put an OS on it. I decided on good old Windows 7 as it should scale very well with the hardware on this laptop. 
Not only that, it was the latest OS for this laptop officially supported by Lenovo, so drivers shouldn't be an issue. 20 minutes later and Windows was installed. And I'll say, using this laptop was a great experience. Programs are quick to open with that SSD, and browsing the web was very brisk on this laptop thanks to the Core 2 Duo and decent amount of RAM. In general, this laptop was great for any daily tasks. As for video playback, the laptop can manage some simpler 720p videos, but overall the best viewing experience was had at 480p, which netted very minimal stutter. There was a bit of video tearing, but nothing too bad. Battery life wasn't anything amazing, but still pretty decent. I got about 3 hours out of this laptop in general usage before it was dead. Sometime in the future I'd love to get one of those Ultra Bay batteries and see how much it improves battery life. But now on to the fun stuff. Time to really put this thing through its paces with some gaming benchmarks. Let's see how this cheap laptop stacks up. First up we have Half-Life 2, running in the native resolution of 1680x1050 with a mix of low and medium settings. The laptop managed an average frame rate of 41 FPS, with 1% lows down to 29. Overall it was a great experience, and even though a lot of settings were turned down, the game looked really good at such a high resolution. Next up we have Terraria, running in 1440x900 with the low settings. It managed averages of 60 FPS, with 1% lows down to 47. The game was very enjoyable thanks to those tight frame times, with only minimal stutter when entering a new biome. Not bad for a laptop of this price. Now, to address the question on all of your minds, can it run Crisis? And actually, yes, yes it can, at 800 by 480 with the lowest settings. This netted averages of 32 FPS, with 1% lows of 13. The game would stutter quite badly when saving, but otherwise it was actually a playable experience. Yeah, it didn't look very good, but considering how demanding this game is, the results are pretty impressive. Finally, we have Minecraft. I ran an older version of the game with Optifine, as for some reason newer versions refused to launch. I'm using the fast settings at 1440x900 and the laptop got averages of 44 FPS, with 1% lows down to 26. Overall, it was a good experience, with a bit of stutter when loading chunks. The higher resolution made the game look nice, and it was pretty smooth besides the momentary stutter. So, this laptop was quite a nice find for the price. It works wonders in newer, simpler games or older AAA titles alike. Not only that, I could totally daily drive this thing thanks to its very brisk performance in general tasks. You also get some of those trademark ThinkPad features such as the wonderful keyboard and overall ruggedness. On the whole, this is a very practical and feature rich laptop that is a great buy at this price. Anyhow, that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.